Hi, it's Dina with Pretty Productive. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but I am back now. I'm going to be doing my November budget setup, kind of give you some life updates of what has changed since my last video, which I believe was back in May, and um, talk about my current state of my budget, what I'm working on, and then hopefully be able to catch up with a lot of you and what's happening in your life and what's happening with your budget. If this is content that sounds like you would like to follow along, please consider subscribing to follow. So this sheet should look very familiar to those of you who have watched my videos before. This is my budget setup, but I did want to quickly show how I really like start. And that is a spreadsheet. Now I know that this is very hard to see, on the camera so it's not really for you to be able to see the details the details will be on this sheet but just wanted you to know because I get a lot of questions do I use a computer do I use a spreadsheet yes I do this is a template that's in Excel that is um, part of just the Excel program and then you can personalize it to your particular situation your categories but I use this as my first step because it brings over from the prior month. So some things stay the same and obviously other things I need to adjust based on the season, things like that. So I'm showing you that, not just for you to be able to see that part, but just so that you know, because that is a question I get. Um, one person commented that she couldn't see it and she was frustrated. Um, I will, I'm working on doing a screen recording so you can actually see that part of the budgeting process. Um, but the way that this prints out because it's blue, is very hard to read in this kind of a situation. So just know that you will see that eventually, but that is where I start my process. Okay, so let's get started. And then I'm gonna roll right into a cash stuffing. So for someone who hasn't done content for a while, be kind because it may take me a little bit to uh, kind of get back in the swing of things. So um, income, unfortunately, has not changed. So 39.18, 39.18. My husband and I both get paid once a month at the first of the month, and they're very close to the same amount. So I just take the two, combine them, and divide them by two. My one daughter pays me $40 for her phone bill, and then I'm am working this month but i don't put it in incremental because until i actually work i know that i could get sick or my day my hours could get canceled so i don't put an income in there i don't budget for it um, but i will tell you what i am planning to do with the income for this month and next month so the total is 78 76 i believe i did have to get a new calculator because my solar calculator gave up on me So 78.76 is our income. Now we have both already been paid. Today is November 3rd. Um, the only thing I, my daughter usually pays her bill at the end of the month. Um, I unfortunately am not putting anything into savings right now. Um, when I last was doing videos, my whole focus for 2024 was to fund my daughter's wedding. Her wedding was October 12th. Um, I had two goals for this year. One was that she loved everything about her wedding and two, that we stayed on the budget that we had set. And I will tell you that it, the wedding was amazing and we were completely on budget. We had a little bit of excess that we were able to kind of at the end pay her back for some things that she had out of pocket paid for and to be able to kind of, you know, any last minute surprises we were able to cover under our original budget. So I'm very proud of not only her and my son-in-law for being very conscious of the budget, but I'm happy that we were able to provide her with the wedding of her dreams and not have any debt occurred either from um, ourselves or for them. So very good. Um, and it's just nice that it's over with and I can now kind of start to plan some things for 2025 as well. Um, car maintenance, I am putting $300 in. My car went out of warranty in September. I've already had to put tires on. I've already had to replace brake pads. I had a hole in my tire the other day. They fixed that for free, but I know it's coming. And so I'm just going to go ahead and plan for it. Um, does it make me happy as somebody who's never had to worry about 
car maintenance, car tags, things like that. Um, it's just not that much fun, but it is what it is, part of owning a vehicle. Um, for Christmas, I'm still funding at 300. I am fully funded in the month of November. I'm just putting a little bit more of a cushion in there. For my envelopes, um, I am pulling out, and these are my sinking funds that are in envelopes, $970, and I'll show you that breakdown. My general fund is not anything. Gifts, home improvement, medical, I'm putting 100. I have pretty much exhausted my medical that I had saved for now in 2024, the beginning part of the year, you saw me struggling paying for my bills from my surgery. I had an implant. Medically, I had a very, very expensive year <laughs> last year. So hoping in 2025, I don't have that issue. Um, technology is getting nothing and vacation's getting a whole $29 because when I was all done figuring everything out, the only thing I had left was $29. So that's why vacation's getting 29. Um, landscaping is 140. Phone is 135. Electricity is not here yet, but um, if you know anything about the weather, I don't know how the weather has been. I live in Phoenix. We have had an unseasonably warm, record breaking year in 2024. So I think the way my bill is tracking right now, it will be 260. My average for the year when I calculate my yearly is 250. So I always budget at least 250. But for this month, based on the tracking, I'm going 260. Um, I should have my bill in the next couple of days. It has cooled down considerably. As you can see, I have a sweatshirt on today, which is so nice. My water bill, 97. Gas bill was 25 or 24. I think it's 25. One moment. Oh, it's 25. Um, internet is 120. Direct TV went up $10. It's now 130. Netflix is still 17. HBO Plus, which is really max, is 11. Hulu is 20. So for my max, I don't have the ad free one. Um, I might upgrade that, but I'm looking at a way to bundle all of this so it actually ends up being less. My life insurance on my husband's is 106. Gym is 70. Playzona is a place I take my granddaughter to. It's 70 a month. Um, I started this during the summer because it was too hot for her to be outside. I think I'm going to keep it through the holidays and then we'll reevaluate in January. Car wash is 25. Our medical insurance went up. It's 18.31 now, so it went up $300 in September. And my granddaughter is 5.29. I contribute $100 a month too. Um, my homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, and property tax are sinking funds that I do for an annual bill. So I take out $175 a month for my homeowner's insurance, and that's our homeowner's insurance plus an umbrella policy. My auto insurance, I take out $375, and for my property taxes, I take out $400. Um, HOA, I take out $105 a month. It is paid quarterly, and pest control, I take out $35, and it is also quarterly. So these bills, I adjusted when we paid them in July. I paid my property tax in October, and then I readjusted for 25 for 2025, and then my homeowner's policy and my auto insurance policy are due in August, like August 1st. But I took what we paid for 2024 and added 15% because it's been going up about 15% a year, which is just ridiculous amount of money. But we do save by paying them annually. And I do have our insurance agent do a whole review before I pay the bill just to see if there's a better policy for us out there. So let's add up what our fixed expenses are. Actually, I already have it added up. It's 42.47. So my fixed expenses are the same all the time. These I kind of separate out because they are, I contribute to them monthly, but they're not due monthly. So if I had something happened where I couldn't fund them, I could make it up later, but I plan to always take this out monthly. So in my actual cash envelopes that I do, this just wants to stick here. 
I took groceries to 500. Now I do not do HelloFresh anymore. I did do a weight loss program for the wedding. I started in July and did it in October. I'm still eating on that plan, which is very basic, very low fat, low carbs, no sugar, which is great. But Hello Fresh and, and some of the other meals that we had done, meal services we had done, were very heavy in some of the things I just don't eat anymore. So I stopped doing that. I did less than groceries, but I, I brought up eating out because there's a lot of things that we can grab that are healthy for us, that fit in my eating plan, that really, from a cost perspective, I probably could not make it for that, nor do I feel like making it. So spending was, is still 200. My mom still gets 50. Entertainment I have at 100. Miscellaneous at 50. Personal care I've taken up to 300. Now one thing I found with the wedding is I did get my hair colored. Professionally I've always done it myself. Um, I did put nails on for the wedding. I'm going to keep them on through the holiday season because I'm working a lot and it just is easier when they're already done and I still get my massages and pedicures so um, that is high for me it's a lot more than I've ever spent on personal care but I'm really happy with the way my hair turned out I'm really happy with you know the things that I've been doing I feel better physically um, I feel like I look better so I'm going to keep doing that until something happens and I can't afford it anymore. Um, household gets a hundred gas is two fifty. I brought this down a little bit and medicine is a hundred now household and medicine. I did roll these two numbers over from last month. Everything, all my other envelopes were either done or I cleared out these two. I kept the money in there. So I'm putting it here just so I remember what I started with. But when I calculate it, I take these two out because that money is already in the envelope. And then under my subscriptions, I have Simple Paper for 35. Coffee Monster Co. came out this month at 49. Elements is 80 and Audible is 16. Now Elements I'm going back and forth on because the person that I had as my massage therapist, who was amazing, left and went to another place. So I... Don't know if I'm going to continue that or if I'm going to try to follow her. So I haven't been back there. She gave me a few recommendations, but you know, when you find somebody you really like, it's hard to switch. So this adds up together as 1930. So when I take my fixed expenses up here, it's 4247. My lifestyle at 1930. Fortunately, I'm not saving right now. Um, we do have a fully funded emergency fund, but it's a little different. Um, those of you who have watched my channel for a while know that my husband and I both retired. So he has a pension that comes in no matter what. I have a draw that I do on my pension monthly. So I feel very secure in our income right now. So I don't feel like I need to have like as big of a cushion as if when we were working when you know if one of us had a job loss and we didn't have like that guaranteed pension income so i do still have the money set aside so in case anything happens but it's invested with our financial planner which is very easy for me to get to within 24 hours if something major happened but it's different than when i was working when i kept it in cash attached to my checking account because I needed to be able to react to something very quickly and I didn't want to know how long it was going to take to get it out of my financial planner. So just so that you know, kind of understand my situation in life versus where I was maybe 10 years ago. So that gives me for sinking funds, 42, 47 for fixed, 1934 lifestyle minus 78, 76, is $16.99 for sinking funds. So right off the top on my sinking funds, I remove the $300 for car maintenance, the $300 for Christmas, the $100 for medical, 
and the 29 for vacation. So that leaves me with 970, which is what our going, this amount is going into my envelopes. So when I break out my envelopes, this is the sheet that I use. So I start first with looking at what's currently in the envelopes, and then I start to fund my priorities. This amount right here, so my annual bills gets transferred into a Capital One high yield account, car maintenance is transferred, Christmas is transferred, medical is transferred, vacation is transferred. So these right here are really transfers, but they're already accounted for as bills on my main sheet, but they're really sinking funds for future. So just so you see, I don't pull this out in cash, I just do a transfer. So what I am prioritizing for this month in my sinking funds is beauty at 100. Um, I just stocked up on everything I think I can need, but you never know. Um, close 200. So one of the um, pluses of a weight loss is program is that I have lost 30 pounds. The other side of that is none of my clothes fit me anymore. So I have been slowly replacing you know, my clothes. Um, so jeans, t-shirts, you know, even like my sweats, shorts, we're just very uncomfortable. I am doing it slowly and I'm trying to do it really cost effectively, but you know, it just seems to add up when you're trying to buy things kind of all at one time. So I have been putting 200 a month aside and then my husband also offered to, he's like, I'll just, you know, if you need something, let me know and I'll just give you the money for it. I'm like, great. Um, planning and journaling 100. I already have everything purchased for 2025. What I do need though is, um, you're going to see what I'm using right now for budgeting book. I do need to probably buy the Erin Condren monthly. Uh, car registration gets 60 a month. Um, then I fund birthdays. So my birthday, my daughter and son-in-law, my husband, and then my other daughter and her family. So I take those out every single month. And then I'm funding Thanksgiving, which is really late for me. I don't even know what our plans are yet, but I pulled 150 for Thanksgiving, 60 for date night, and then um, 35 for pest control, which is really part of the bill part. So I do pull out 105 for the HOA, and I do pull out the 35 for pest control out of my bill money. So I'm kind of seeing that might have been a problem. So then once I decide that, then I write down everything that I'm going to pull cash from, and then I break out the denominations. I subtract, So I add that up. So seven $100 bills is what I need to fund everything that I'm, I'm going to fund with cash. I take out what is currently in my back to bank envelope, and then the balance is what I pull from the bank. So I pulled $1,707 from my checking account on Friday for a total of 2,800. So between what I pulled and what was in my back to bank, totally is 2,800. So just so you kind of see where, you know, how I calculate that money. And this right here, you can see the $200 that 100 in medical and 100 in household, because what I needed to pull was 3,070 and I only pulled 2,800 because two of the envelopes were already funded. So just so you can get a gauge. Okay, so from that, we go right into cash stuffing. Now, when I was last filming, I did pull money out for bills because I really kind of just needed a handle on what, okay, for some reason, this she just wants to stick here. Um, I was really struggling with kind of staying on budget, but also I was just bored. I was bored with my budget. I was bored with the way I was doing it. I felt like, you know, and that was a lot of why I kind of backed away from filming as I felt like, you know, you all could have done my budget for me because it never changed. And it was quite um, redundant to me. So I just kind of was shaking it up and trying something different. And so my something different was really to start pulling out bills and really kind of micromanaging the budget a little bit more. And I've since decided that was not a good plan for me because I busy enough. I didn't need one more thing to do. So, but I did continue the same budgeting when I was not filming as I did when I was filming. So because I did not have an Erin Condren for this year, I kind of just took this notebook and kind of created it. 
So I did a monthly calendar for November. These are my codes for how I code the bills on my transaction log. Um, that's still similar. And then I just pretty much set this up as if it was the monthly deluxe that I have used for years. So our income, the goals for the month, and notes on the month. So my goals this month are really pretty much just to get back to the rhythm of budgeting and not overspending in certain categories because that's one thing that I have found. I was doing a lot of moving envelopes and instead of staying on top of it on a weekly basis, I was letting it kind of accumulate and then I would be like, oh, I gotta pay that out to my card. And at the same time, I had wedding expenses coming in and I was trying to manage that budget, manage mine, and then we had a whole tax issue with my parents, so I was dealing with taxes too. So September was not a fun month, but you know, we came out of it, we're fine, we didn't incur any debt, but you know, again, I don't wanna go back to that, taking my eyes off of it because that's when I get into trouble. So I do have some goals that we'll talk about at, in my next video and then some just some notes that I can use for future. Um, so these are my monthly bills. Um, some of them have already come in, so I've included the actual. Some of them are still estimates. Then I set this up on this one. So some of the notes that I've had to kind of keep in mind is when I'm taking money from my envelopes, like for groceries or eating out, and I'm putting it in my back to bank. So I do have trackers, but on those bills, on those cash envelopes, I normally don't use trackers, but I've just been keeping a running total. So if my husband goes to Costco and I hand him $125 out of groceries, I've been putting the receipt in the envelope just to remind myself, but I kind of just like a note too to say, okay, if I had a receipt that had multiple categories on it, how did I break it out? And just to make sure that I've captured everything. So that's my back to bank page. And then these are the sinking funds that I'm funding. I have more than this, but I'm only putting the ones I'm funding for this month on this page. And then my weekly check-in is similar to the past. Um, so these are the 10 categories that I weekly check into. Now my sinking funds, if I pull those, it shows up on my transaction log and it will show up on my sinking fund. But these are the ones that are actually cash in my binder that you know, are my very active envelopes. I'm not expecting to have anything in these at the end of the month. It's great if I do, but you know, I understand that whatever's in here, I'm planning to spend. So this is a four week month for my budget. And then I go into my transaction log. So I put the date, the transaction, so who it was to, what budget is coming out of, what the total amount was, and then I just check off when I've tracked it. And that way it helps me if I, see transactions on there and I'm like looking at the date and I'm like, did I capture that before? I can look and say, yes, I've already captured that one. It should be highlighted, it should be checked off. So I have four pages for transaction logs because I am averaging four pages, which is ridiculous, but here we go. The other thing that I'm doing differently this month because I am not doing um, pulling my bill money is I'm taking the bill money out of my checking account and moving it onto Capital One at the beginning of the month. So it's $723 I've already transferred into my general fund on Capital One. And the reason why I do that is that when it's in my checkbook and I see a balance, I think I have more money in there than I really do. So I pull it out, I send it over to Capital One, it sits there until that bill comes through, and then I just transfer it from my Capital One account onto my Capital One card. It's instantaneous. And then that way I know that everything that I had planned for bill money is already there. And I don't need to worry that I'm going to have to pay out of my checking account. So again, your budget needs to work for you and it needs to work, you know, however you see fit. Like everybody is very individualized in their budget. You know, your money habits. I know mine. I know what my triggers are planning season, um, going out to eat. I know my triggers. I just have to bring them in and manage them. And if I budget for something, I'm allowed to spend it. I don't feel any guilt for spending money that I budgeted for. So that's just the way I handle my money. Okay. So for groceries, um, it's $500 and I broke that out as two $100 bills, four fifties, five twenties, and that's it. 
So my husband loves to go to Costco. I hate to, so it's, it's a perfect marriage. Um, we do not share a credit card. So he has um, a credit card on my Capital One that I use. He is a count authorizer, so if something happens to me, he has full access to our savings accounts there and the card and everything. Um, but he uses a MasterCard because of the points. So when he goes to Costco, you cannot use MasterCard. You have to use Visa. So he's just been using his debit card and then I pay him back. I'm trying to encourage him just to go ahead and use the Capital One for any of the things that are in envelopes just so that I don't have to go pull money out. I can just pay the bill with it, but he's kind of set in his ways. So one, two, three, four, 420, 440, 460, 480, 500. So 500 in groceries. Eating out is getting 300, and I did that as 250s, 820s. Now my husband and I have gotten very good at using apps and point system. So we, we've kind of made a game out of it to say, oh, I only paid this much at Depulti because I had a free whatever. Um, so instead of going in and waiting in line and paying cash, we've been using the app. I do it through my credit card and then I just transfer the money onto my card. So I feel like we're winning both ways. We're getting points, we're getting discounted food, and then we're still, you know, paying it off at the end of the month. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and four tens, right? Yeah, four tens. Okay, that should be 300, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 2, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 300. You all know if you've been around for a while that the minute the camera goes on, I can't count. So let's just see if we can get through this. Um, spending, I have been doing a little bit differently. I have not been putting the full amount in my wallet. Um, I have been just putting a 20 in and then leaving the rest there. And what I have been finding with my spending is I've been wanting to do things. I've donated to some things. I've, um, you know, helped people out, things like that. So my spending is where that is coming from. So instead of just putting the 50 in my wallet at the beginning of each week, which I had been doing, I always want to make sure I have some cash with me. So if I want to stop and get a drink or something, I'm not putting it on my card. But I did find that when I put 50 in there, I spent 50. So now it's just like if I want to do a donation and it's $40, then I can do the 40 and I just take it out of my spending. So it's kind of helped me with those unbudgeted that I've been doing. And it took me a while to figure out that if everything is kind of budgeted for, I shouldn't be pulling spending money for things that I have a budget for. So I don't want to just waste the money on things I really don't need just because it's in my wallet. So 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90. I'm going to take 20 out and put that in my wallet though because I think I have two dollars in there right now <laughs> and then household is the hundred that I rolled over my mom gets 50 20 30 40 50 um, she still likes her donuts she really um, is at the stage um, those of you that are new my mom is in a memory care facility she is on hospice. Um, she has been losing weight. Um, the hospice nurse said, are you not bringing your donuts anymore? I say I am, but she doesn't always eat them. But I bring two for my mom and two for uh, a lady that's in there that's kind of adopted me as her daughter. She's very sweet. Um, so I do bring them donuts on a weekly basis. And so that's where that money kind of tends to go. All of her care that she needs comes out of our trust um, that my dad set up for her. Um, medicine is rolled over. Miscellaneous gets 50. Entertainment is 100. And it is five. This category came in very handy um, as we were kind of leaning into the wedding and we had um, family in and we were able to go do stuff. Um, I 
you know, obviously didn't take the money out of wedding, but it was nice having some entertainment money to work with. Gas is two fifty. I have been budgeting three hundred, but my average has been two fifty. So I'm going to pull this down, and hopefully, this is not the month that it goes up again. But now I will increase this next month because I am working a lot in the month of December and I'm working farther from home. So I don't want to, you know, have to worry that I don't have enough in this category. So 51, 150, 170, 190, 210, 230, 250. Personal care is getting 300 and I broke this out as, let me see. 250s, 720s, 720s, 410s, 25s, and 10 ones. Okay, should be 300. Now I am getting a pedicure today. I'm getting my nails done next Saturday and I'm getting my hair cut on the 21st and I have not booked a massage. So pretty much this should all be accounted for back to zero at the end of this month. So 1, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 85, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 300. And then back to bank is empty. It's the new month. Then the other ones that I fund are my sinking funds. So I've consolidated some of my binders. I used to have five and now I have three. Um, I still need to make a couple new envelopes, but um, this is where we're at right now. So these are all funded. Um, Halloween, I had 50 in there. I didn't end up using it. So I took and put it back into my back to bank and then I'm using that for Thanksgiving. Kind of added to that. So I have 150 for Thanksgiving. Christmas got 300, but it's an online transfer. So my birthday gets 50. My husband's birthday gets 50. Um, this is a new envelope I need to do because my daughter and son-in-law, he just had a birthday, um, but they get 100. My other daughter and her family gets 100. I really wiped this one out between her 30th birthday and um, I did a spa day for her 30th birthday that my other daughter went to and that was very expensive. We had a great time, but kind of just wiped everything out. Um, nieces and nephews is funded. Liam and Milo are my daughter's dogs. That's funded. And that binder is done. And then this one is really more my bills or like those categories that I know I'm going to go through pretty quickly. I'm not expecting them to stay around. So for beauty is two fifties. Now I just went to salon centric with a friend of mine and stocked up on all the things that I needed. So I hopefully do not need anything. Clothes is 200 and that was two fifties and five twenties. 20, 40, 60, 81. Now I did do daily look, which is a styling. I, this will be my third time this month. So there's a $60 fee. And then if you buy something, you can use that. I'm sorry, it's $40 fee. And then you can use that towards it. Uh, I didn't buy anything last month. I did roll my styling fee over, change the date of it so that I could use my styling fee from last month into this month. And then my box will be here this week and then I'll have a chance to go through it and see. So if it, if there's nothing that I buy this time, then I'll probably put a pause on that. Um, these, so lawn care gets 140. And this, I just hand to my husband and he does Zelle. I don't have Zelle on my account. Planning and journaling gets a hundred. 
and I really should not need one thing in this category, but of course I'm, you know, I never know. Uh, I did that as 150. I don't have another 50 there. How did I do this? Hold on one moment. Yeah, 150, 220, and a 10. Okay, I'm just gonna put the 220s and the 10 in here, and I'll have to figure out what happened. This is HOA. Okay, I will do that off camera because you guys don't need to sit and watch me try to figure this out. <laughs> Okay, so I don't have the cash for that. I don't have date night. Hmm. Okay. So where's HOA? HOA is 105. Okay, so I should have counted that before I counted it last night. It was right last night. I don't know why it's not right today. So I have 25 for pest control. So I'll put that in. I still need another 10. Okay, so on my notes section, so thank God there's a note section on here, right? to pull I need 50 for planning ten for pest control 60 for date night. And that's the only thing. Oh, 60 for car registration. Wow, that is really off. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll figure it out. Something either got overfunded, which would be my guess, but I thought I counted everything. Hmm. Okay, so I know I started in that, in the envelope from the bank was 1707. What could have happened, well, I don't know. I don't think I pulled anything out of my back to bank. So I will figure it out. Um, this is the real world <laughs> right now. Um, so what I'll do tomorrow is I'll go through the envelopes off camera, obviously. And then I'll go through and pull this money out. So I still need to pull another 50 plus 10 plus 60 plus 60, 180 out. And I'll pull that out tomorrow and then just go ahead and add those to the envelope. So that will be my plan. So thank you so much for watching. If you have not done so already, please consider subscribing. Um, I promise to be more consistent. Um, I have worked with my camera. Hopefully it's a better quality. I've looked into purchasing cameras. Uh, the camera that I purchased four years ago has not only doubled, but it's gone more than double the price. So I was kind of surprised <laughs> how expensive cameras are right now. So I'll work it out, but um, that is the situation right now. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, please put a note down below in the description. And if you have um, been having a great success story with your budget over the last couple months, please put it down in the comment section. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.